That's it. We just want to win for our team. My goodness! as good as men or better it's a huge point for the bay area good chance that's the number one highlight of the week i'm looking around right now because i am in the most densely populated state in north america the birthplace of frank sinatra john bon jovi and the home of the Princeton Revolution. I'm Ryan Willard, and this is Major League Table Tennis. Welcome to week 12. This is day number one, and you are about to witness one of the craziest matchups of the Eastern Division. We have the Florida Crocs going up against the Princeton Revolution. The fate of both teams lies in this match. Only one will go to the championships next month in Chicago. Now, I'm in a place that y'all might know. Some people call it new, but I just call it Jersey, baby. Can I get some love from New Jersey? So we're gonna start this off and we're gonna bring on our umpires. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your umpire, Walter Lamb, who will be assisted by Jovana Nezhevic. Ladies and gentlemen, the challengers coming in to the New Jersey home court today, hailing from Florida, please welcome the Florida Crocs. And that is Daniel Gorak, Mark Duran, Benjamin Brossier, Ojo Analapo. Matilda Echo and Daniel Gonzalez. Now I want you, if you're in the stands, I want you to stomp your feet right now. I want you to show us, let us hear who this home team is. Make some noise. Ladies and gentlemen, your very own Princeton Revolution! And that is Jishan Liang, Jinxing Wang, Yevgen Prishepa, Koyo Kanamitu, Angela Guan, and Matthew Dintantilin. I just got to hear from the crowd. Are you guys ready for this Major League Table Tennis match right now? That's right. All right, teams, let's shake hands and let's get down with the get down. All righty, that sets the stage for arguably the most important head-to-head -head team matchup of the entire Major League Table Tennis season. Why is it so critical? Well, Florida and Princeton enter this final weekend of the regular season, second and third respectively. In the East Division, only the top two will make the playoffs. Just three points separate the Revolution and the Crocs. Princeton with 213, Florida with 210. Carolina has clinched a playoff berth, and now it's the final time that Princeton and Florida will collide, each trying to set the tone for what they hope will be a playoff clinching weekend. Welcome again to our perch, everybody. This is Major League Table Tennis. Matt Hetherington and Evan Leppler are with you. And Matt, every single time that Princeton and Florida have squared off this year, dating back to six months ago in September, the score going into the Golden Game has been 8-7. They've played a lot of really tight matches, but none is more important than what we've got this evening. I mean, this is it. Uh, to have it in their home court, this could be a, a privilege or a downfall. There's plenty of uh, voodoo of previous home matches. We don't know how that's going to play into things, but I mean, they, they've done so well to gain momentum uh, coming into this weekend. 
the Florida Crocs, they still have as big a chance as any to, to get that second spot. Either team could come out in the second playoff position here. Of course, it's not only about tonight, this obviously being a, an important face-off, but there's still two more matches also this weekend. So there's a lot on the line here, but you know, two more matches to come. Nobody knows what's gonna happen. Obviously, Princeton has had the momentum during the second half of the season after such a slow start. The Revolution have come on strong. Much of that has been at Florida's expense. The Revolution have won the last four battles against Florida since the Crocs won in September. It is a little crazy, Matt, as we look at the lineup that Daniel Gorak and Jishan Leong is a matchup that we have not seen all year long in a singles match. I think we've seen it in a couple of Golden Games, but in terms of a, a three-game, 2-11 single showdown, this will be the first time we're seeing Gorak against Leong, and we heard Damian Provost talk about it when we asked him his thoughts at the end of the Chicago Carolina match. He said, this is going to set the tone, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. What about you? Um, I mean, it's obviously a, a really big match for both teams. Um, they're both fighting for a playoff. To start the weekend facing off against each other, it's going to put a lot of pressure on them to start the weekend, but maybe it'll alleviate some pressure off one of the teams, potentially, um, when they come to a result. But, yeah, I mean, momentum shifts have been different. Princeton Revolution have been on the way up. Florida struggling a little bit. We'll see how things go tonight. Quick reminder of the rules, the four singles matches, sandwiching the one doubles match, all of which are three games to 11, each game worth one point. The golden game counts for six. So unless a team gets to 11 in the course of the first 15 games through regulation, it will come down to the golden game. And the Golden Game is just a, a spectacle unlike the world of table tennis has ever seen. It had become pretty predictable this year, you know, since the calendar flipped to January. But uh, <laughs> Chicago, 10, 15 minutes ago. yeah, Chicago is has been the outlier. They have First two game. come from behind Cross wins serve. this year in Golden Games. Zero. Members of the Chicago Wind have found a place in the stands alongside all the other fans and. The anticipation has built considerably to this moment. Gorak versus Leong. Daniel Gorak serves to get us started. First time we're seeing this matchup in a match. What uh, what are the bullet points you'd like to hit on both players? Uh, obviously, Jishan, big forehand game. Um, everybody's aware of this. The, the amount of power he can get on his forehand. Zero. Is a real danger to any player in the league. Um, as he said in the last matchup, he's one of the only players that's beaten Enzo as well. Um, Gorak's quick. Gorak's a really Zero, quick player. He, he doesn't have the biggest shots, um, but he generates so much speed, both backhand and forehand, a lot of wrist in the backhand. So I think Gorak. If he can play his A game, we'll have a slight advantage here um, because that quickness helps you keep somebody off their forehand. It's something that can really factor in here. Um, and, you know, I think, I think Daniel Gorak Four, has had one. Um, big up and down swings across MLTT. He started out the season really well. I think he has a lot to prove, and if there's ever going to be a weekend to do it. It's this one. He's off to a scintillating start. Catching one, the edge there. Five. He's won five of the first six points. Arguably, Jishan's best weekend of the season came last month in Winter Haven when he upset Enzo. Went seven and two in singles for the weekend. One, but Gorak is looking like September Gorak right now. Daniel went seven and two in the opening MLTT weekend in September. He went ten and two in seven, the interdivisional one. weekend, and obviously he's half of the strong doubles pairing. We've seen Gorak and Ekholm become a force in doubles. 
So you're down 8-1, you're Jishan Leong. You don't necessarily want to take a timeout in game one. What are you trying to figure out? Eight, you're not trying to one. necessarily come back and win this game. Certainly you can, but you're trying to figure out something for games two and three here in these next few points. Yeah, but also the momentum's important. Um, two, you know, Eric eight, Owens said it in his post-match interview. Damien's talked about it as well, momentum. And you can lose a game 11-2 or you can lose a game, you know, 11-5, 11-6. Any point that you can claw back to help build yourself up for the next game uh, can make all the difference. So, you know, if, if Jishan can win five or six points here, even if Gorak wins the game, it'd do him the world of good going into game two. Three straight for Jishan after falling behind 8-1. We'll see Leong and Gorak both playing doubles today. Gorak with Matilda Ekholm and Leong with the chopper, Angela Guan. A little bit of pressure building now on Gorak. He went with a deep serve. Leong handled it. Four in a row for the Princeton player. What's going through Gorak's mind right now, Matt? the big forehand. It's probably the worst thing for a player to see at this stage of a, an opening game. He totally handcuffed him with the blistering pace of that forehand. We've seen him do that a bunch this year. You have to be so careful playing to the center of Jishan's forehand. Goodness. Six straight points Seven, for Jishan eight. Leong. Timeout, Crooks. Gorok's taking a timeout. It, this game felt like it was over at 8-1. And all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. And Gorok's on the ropes a little bit here early. Yeah, it's it's almost no wondering spin if, if uh -huh. that he's serving. Well, you got one and a half like you made. Yeah. And, uh, and with the cell, but he, he's, he's now waiting for the, if you step around, he's waiting for the banana there. So probably if you can go to, down the line and, and, and your two serves, I think. Uh, with the comeback to the reverse, I think. No? Your two serves to the to the forehand. He's, he's just, he's just going to push and, uh, and ready to attack either side, whatever you want to do, but either side you attack. And come on, come on. You, said, you spin the first one to the back and after that is. Okay. Keep going, keep going. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Interesting. Uh, very early timeout. Of course, both teams through the first four singles and one doubles. They only have two timeouts. So, you were about to make a point before you. Yeah, I, I, I did notice Gorak said something about Seven, the net. I don't know whether eight. he was indicating that he thought Jishan maybe touched the net with his racket after he hit the ball or. Not entirely sure. Wow. The revolution momentum continues. Seven straight for Jishan Leong. Eight all. Opening game. And Leong is locked in. He's nine. won eight points in a row after losing eight of the first nine to the delight of the Princeton owners. Roger and Andre watching from their tableside seats and a service error from Daniel Gorak. Ten, My eight. goodness. Can you believe this? one point away from stealing this opening game. That'll do it. 11 to eight for Jishan. He closes on a 10 nothing run. And that is one heck of a way to start this pivotal weekend for the Princeton Revolution. If I didn't see it, I would not believe it.
Spicy start to this big time Just meaningful ghost, matchup. Ghost, ghost pepper spicy. Princeton now a four point lead in the overall standings. Jishan serving to start game two. And Borak One. snaps the 10 0 run by winning this opening point on Jishan's serve. I mean, that. What are your big takeaways from what we just watched? Um, it's kind of hard to unravel. I mean, uh, Gorak started so well in the first five or six points, but uh, all it takes is you, you take a little bit of pressure off, and like I said, it's about momentum. And, and Jishan clearly was just focusing one point at a time, just trying to add one more point to his uh, to his tally to try and get some momentum. And he just took it and run with it. And I think uh, Gorak, towards the timeout and after the timeout, went from being really pumped up at the start to being a little bit frustrated. And that mentality shifted everything in that first game. We have seen Daniel wear that frustration on his sleeve, literally, at times, particularly in the second half of the season. And this start reminiscent of game number one, Gorak is dictating the pace and tempo of the point. You can see Gorak making an effort to get the ball out wider to the forehand. Jishan's a player who likes to step around a lot, so. Again, that style that we talked about earlier with Pinto as well, the serve and step around to find the forehand. Strong response from Gorak here in game two. Now, obviously, the job is far from done. Yeah, I mean, I think he knew exactly what he was trying to do, and it, wor it was working for him. But, you know, the wheels just fell off. And to get to that pressure point at the end of the first game and to miss your own serve, that kind of shows how much pressure both of these teams are under right now. And going out first, you know, having that responsibility to set the mood for your team. Swing and a miss from Leon. Seven, pointing to the lights. Three. Again, you can see Gorak trying to get the ball out to the forehand side more. Eight, three. <laughs> Gorak just <laughs> trying to keep himself fired up. Just kind of seemed like he was saying, you know, this is simple stuff. You just got to keep executing. Three, nine. Right, nine, three lead here for Gorek. You have to feel he should be able to close this one out. Felt that in game one, though, too. Yeah. And that's what Jishan's capable of. Four, nine. Talk so much about the forehand, but the reflexes on that backhand down the line, not too shabby either. Oh. 10-4. We saw Jishan win 10 straight points in game one. He's going to need to win the next seven to steal game two. Brilliant play there from Gorak. Keeping the ball short to the forehand. Typically after that, a lot of left-handers will expect the ball to come deep to their backhand. You can see Liang shift. Gorak sends it out even wider to the forehand. Smart play from Gorak. One game apiece.
Daniel Gorak and Chishan Leong heading to a rubber game in this opening singles match. Third Princeton game. and Florida are both 11 and 8 zero, on zero. the season overall. Princeton entered the night with a three point advantage, and it's not the overall one loss record, it's the overall point total that matters most. And Gorak has gotten off to great starts zero. in all three games. Maybe a tad premature to say you stop to a great <laughs> start in game three. One, one. It, it's funny though, it feels like he's dominated the match and yet we're even. Jishan's right there. Yeah, I think Gorak really needs to win this third game. Um, I think knowing, knowing that he had such a big chance to one, get the first two. and knowing how important the value of one point here is right now he definitely needs something to help redeem himself Shishan hustles for that ball again Gorak just playing with really great speed on the ball for his thoughts about this Princeton-Florida match. One of the things he talked about was Gorak's leadership. Mm. And that goes for both his time on the table and his time off the table and sort of kind of setting the tone. That's a tough position to be in. I kind of alluded to that pressure in a couple of the recent uh, rounds where Florida hadn't been doing as well. And if you compare... Gorak and Enzo, who are first, both first round draft picks, uh, the first and second picks in the league for the East Division. Three, four. Um, you can see how Enzo has kind of risen to the mantle, and maybe the pressure of the mantle has affected Gorak in a different way, and the results have been pretty clear, I think. Four, four. Tied at four points each here. Five. We'll change sides four. at five four. Gorak with the slim lead. Morak on the season has a singles record of 33 and 24. That was entering this match. Jishan Leon, 21 and 15. Five, four. Both players have won more games than they've lost. Ojo and Yevgen up next. Which side will have the 2 1 lead? Four, six. Morak. I mean, there, there are a lot of players in this league, Matt, that after giving up a 10-0 run to lose a game that you led by seven, would not take the table for that next game as mentally ready right, yeah. as Daniel Korok certainly did. Five, two. Shishan just going tooth and nail in these rallies. That, as much as anything, speaks to Gorak's leadership and ability to comport himself even in the face of adversity. All right, tries to keep the ball short, tight to the net. Six. Six. Roger and Andre in their corner spot. You know, I actually spoke to Andre before just briefly and asked if he was nervous. 
And he said, you know what? He said, I'm not feeling that nervous. He said, I feel like the team has gotten to a good point and we've done everything we can, so. I said that will probably change once, once the match starts. <laughs> as we're tied 7-all here in this rubber game of this opening singles match. Well, regardless of what happens tonight, this is likely coming down to Sunday. And you know, Sunday morning at 11 a.m., Florida will play Carolina. Then Princeton has Chicago. The Revolution will, will know going into their last match how many points they mm. need to beat Chicago by. As Leong surges Eight, into the lead. Seven. Chicago win fans on Sunday afternoon here as we're even again, eight all. Eight. What a turnaround in that point from Gorak. Quick defense. Turned it into an attacking opportunity. So many points, so many games, so many practices. All leading on to these critical points in this final weekend. 9-8 for Jishan. That was phenomenal play from Jishan. He knew Gorak has been trying to play quick out to the forehand corner as much as he can. Great anticipation. going to play out. Nine, a huge roar from Gorak on one side, a frustrated foot stop from Jishan Leong on the other. Leong serving, trailing by one at 10-9. and will come down to just this one next point. I wonder how Andre's feeling now. <laughs> ten, ten. Let's. Ooh. All right, switching to the backhand serve. It's an interesting choice. Got another chance to think about it. I don't think he's thought about it enough. I don't think we're gonna see it again. Golden point. Oh my goodness, can you believe that? Leong apologizes and then celebrates. A dramatic victory in this opening singles match. Leong takes down Gorak, 11-10 in game three. Such a well thought out point to finish it. Jishan just blocking the ball across the table into the backhand corner and opened up the angle for the forehand. Huge start for the Revolution to come back and win that first game from 8-1 behind. Jishan Leong has put the headset on. Uh, congratulations, Jishan. What a riveting match. Let's just start at the beginning. You're down eight to one. What are you telling yourself at that point? How'd you come back in game number one? 
Yeah, especially like any happen like recently like I watching and also I play a lot of matches. So even the first match um Pinto play against uh um one player so down ten four. Mm. So I just try to focus on every point because I know even I lose I don't think lose or win, I just try to fight every point. I try to fi find my feeling. Yeah. And I mean the way that you are constructing points, are there particular weaknesses that you're looking for? I know Gorak, he plays quite quick, and obviously when you need a little bit more time to play bigger forehands, you need more, uh, you know, you need more time. How do you, how do you work that against him to slow him down a little bit or to give yourself a chance to play? Yeah, in the beginning I saw his backhand really well. I tried to push more middle and then he stepped around really quick, and then my backhand blocked soft, and then he tried to immediately gain my forehand. Yeah. So, but when I get a chance to coming back, maybe one or two point, and then I try to push to backhand ready to forehand. Tishan, watch the golden point on the monitor and talk us through it. What was going through your mind? Yeah, because I didn't think so much, but I tried to fight because this is the home core, and then of course every point, and it's really important for us. Also, this is the you know the last time we try to fight for the second spot. Congratulations, you and Daniel will uh, go head to head again in doubles, and who knows, maybe in the golden game as well. But you got two out of three, well done, and we'll see you in a little bit. Thanks, Tishan. Thank, Thank you. Oh, uh, Matt, that was a heck of a way to start this evening's activity. Yeah. I um, think that as, as things have warmed up here on this uh, Friday, the matches have just gotten closer and closer. Ojo on a Laupo, the left-hander from Nigeria, big power player. Gonna take on Yevgen Preshepa. Preshepa. This is the first time that they're meeting in yeah. a singles match as well. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing when there's so much pressure on a match <laughs> to have uh, new combinations out there. And one I mean, thing, Ojo, for, for whatever reason, has not played that often against Princeton. It's been the one match he sat out more often than not. I think he actually sat out two last round. He sat one match right. out and he was injured in the second. Um, so he only played one match in Zero, one. Winter Haven. <laughs> now, one of the things Two, that zero. Ojo plays really well against is any half long ball. So any ball that's dropping just over the end of the table after one bounce. Plays with a lot of power. Two, one. Very aggressive against half long. Two, oh. Never look too soon. Shepa, he's played Three, a lot of great matches in MLTT. His Broward weekend was really, really solid. In Orlando, oh, in, sorry, not in Orlando, in uh, Hollywood. Miami, yeah, Hollywood, Four. Florida. Um, when he gets going, I mean, at the the mid distance back from the table, very heavy spin. Yeah, he's, he's very solid. He's been pretty consistent. He's finished with a, a 500 or better singles record in five of his Three, four. six weekends. Interestingly, he, his greatest struggles came in the interdivisional weekend. Rock Hill. Which is strange because the five, East Division three. teams did so well. Yeah. East Division teams won 223 points. West Division teams won 113. So the East outscored the West by 110 Three. points over the 16 team matches that were played over the course of those three busy days in Rock Hill. This is uh, an impressive opening game for Preshepa. He was down seven. early, but seven of the last eight points for the Ukrainian. I think one of the things for Preshepa is he's able to hold his own so well in a rally. Ojo doesn't Three, want to rally eight. with people. 
you know, his first ball has so much power, and you've got to feel the longer the rally goes on, the greater the chance of Prashepa winning the point. Eight, four. There, there is something to be said for the thought that, you know, when, when things are going well for Ojo, they're usually going well for Florida. He's he's a energy guy for hmm. this team. You know, the, the very first ultimate golden point was won by Ojo over Sasha Hanin in a Florida-Chicago match back in October. He played Five, really well in uh, Chicago as well. Sure did. That was the cut sleeves, maybe. That was the... Yeah, that's right. Could have been the... A couple game points Ten, saved for Ojo. Still a long way to go. Revolution. Seen some crazy, some crazy runs so far today. With the Carolina-Chicago match and already here in Florida, Princeton too. Yevgen Prashepa able to close out game one. And that's three of the first four points for the Revolution. An 11-6 win in the opening game of the second singles match for the 38-year-old Ukrainian Yevgen Prashepa. amongst the fans here at the Alumni Gymnasium on the campus of Ryder University. We're in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. The Revolution certainly have the partisan crowd in their favor. Second game, Crocs to serve. Obviously, we're going to be updating these standings after every single game over the course of the weekend. Zero, Princeton zero. had a three-point lead at the start of the weekend. Now it's a five-point lead as they have won three of the last four. What, uh, what stood out Zero. most to you about how Prashepa handled his business in game one, Matt? I think he's just really steady. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a start. He, he's so steady, and y you look at players who are consistent, and, you know, Jeremy Hazim comes to mind, and Damian Provost, but a lot of the time they're playing soft. Prashepa is consistent, but he doesn't play soft. That's he's always adding rotation to the ball. There's always some pressure behind it. He's never really blocking soft. And I think, as I said, when you get into long rallies with him, he's just so reliable at closing out those long rallies. Now, Ojo again, so much power in the beginning. But for Shepa, he's kind of returning a lot of those shots with interest. Perfect example there. And, you know, also, the way that Ojo plays, there's so much body in the ball. So there's a lot of weight transfer, and usually he kind of throws that body weight into the ball. It takes him a little while to recover. So, you know, he doesn't want that ball coming back a lot of the time. Three, three. Joe on the offensive Three, with the counter. Four. Four. Oh. Four. 
side. Shepa just looking solid out there. Ojo a little bit more up and down in terms of points won and points lost. Good fight there from Prashepa. I mean, Prashepa is playing yeah, a lot in uh, different leagues like TT Star Series in the Czech Republic. So he's getting high level matches on a weekly basis of players that can hit the ball really hard. So he Five, seems seven. relatively comfortable with the pace he's getting from Ojo out there. Ojo's not too far from his current home. He lives in Newark, New Jersey now, originally from Nigeria. So you figure the home crowd will give him a little support maybe. Well, we're about well, probably a little less than 15 minutes from Princeton Pong, which is MLTT Commissioner Flint Lane's, one of his two table tennis clubs. So if anything, you can hedge your bets that a lot of the Princeton Club's membership are in here. Two-point lead and a couple serves here for Prashepa. Great third ball pick up there from the Ukrainian. Prashepa now just one point away from making it two games to love here in this second singles match. And the service Alain, error six, closes it out. Games. So it's now 4 1 for Princeton. Good look. You can talk about the golden point that Gorok and Leong played in game three, how, how big of a turning point that might have been. Gorok and Leong are coming back to the table to play doubles here in just a little bit. But the pressure is building for Florida's Crocs, Brossier and Duran still to play as well. but. Oh no, Lapo down two games to none. Yeah, I think the the revolution right now are wearing the pressure a little bit better than the Crocs. I mean, again in a in an important situation, Crocs player missing their own serve. It, it goes to show maybe some nerves in play here. There's a lot on the line in this match. You know, it's like Provo said, he would hate to be in the shoes of these players. You know, he, he feels nervous out there playing the Golden Game when Chicago, they have really no skin in the game anymore for, at least for making a playoff position. Right now the Revolution have doubled their lead over the Florida Crocs to six points on the standings. Yevgen serves to start game three. I think one of the interesting things uh, earlier this morning, uh, before I came into the venue, was talking to Jung Kai about these two teams. And he felt that Ooh. with their current one full team lineup, the Princeton Revolution were more of a threat to the Carolinas in a match than Florida. So that could also factor in a lot as well. One, two. well we, we've talked about that, right? We've talked about Princeton's depth, particularly in the CD spots mm. with Prashepa and Kanemitsu. Three, one. Obviously, DeSantelon as well, who's not active today, but we'll see the Frenchman Matthew DeSantelon presumably tomorrow and Sunday. Oh. Yevgen's just cooking right now. Four, Doing a great job of mixing up the serve game. Some half long, some short, some long fast. That's the long fast again. 
two, four. A couple of occasions where the ball's kind of been floated on serve return for him that he's hit over the end. But generally making pretty good adjustments. Five, service three. error from Analaupo. That can't happen. Oh, sure. Doubles on deck. Princeton has tried a lot of different individuals playing with Angela Guan. And look, we've seen Yevgen play with Guan a lot mm. when he's been active, but Matias Habasan, coach of Princeton, going with Jishan and Angela tonight. What Three. a point. <laughs> Three different net balls Three on that net point. Balls. to return righty against lefty. Five, six. Uh, Ojo closes to within one. Carolina match earlier tonight, four of the five matches, in fact, in all four singles matches. Let. I shouldn't say that. Four of the five matches total. Same team won the first two games, but three out of four times, the person that fell behind 0-2 salvaged a point in game three. We've seen that more often in the East than we have in the West. We talked about it earlier. Seven, six. Statistically for the season, over the course of the 76 team matches that we saw coming into this weekend. You win the first two games, you got about 62% chance of winning game three. More often than not, the sweep is finished off. Yeah! Ojo, Ojo won't stayed go alive. <laughs> seven, seven. Mark Duran liked that one. You could see. Shepper trying to hook the ball wider and wider to Ojo's backhand side. Forehand counters from Prashepa were timed so well. But Ojo just putting everything into the ball. Gonzalez was out of his seat. Maybe faster than I've seen anyone so far this season. Eight all here in game three. Strong initial first return from Ojo. A good short chop. But catching the tape. On the second shot of the point. Prashepa back up one. Great seven attack eight. combo from Prashepa. 10-8. The opportunity for a 3 0 sweep here. Far 
from over, obviously. Pretty good start for Princeton, there's no doubt about it. A cautious serve from Onarapo, and Prashepa outduels the Nigerian in three consecutive games. 11-6, 11-6, and 11-8 to finish it off. A 3-0 sweep for Yevgen Prashepa and a 5-1 lead in this mighty important matchup for the hometown Princeton Revolution. Yevgen Prashepa putting on the headset to join us. Yevgen, congratulations, a 3-0 sweep. Hard to believe it was your first time playing against Ojo in a singles match. What was it like uh, going up against a, a really explosive player? How did you diminish his ability to, to put shots away, and, and what was the key to winning it? Uh, first of all, thanks uh, for your congratulations. And my plan was use my different serves to I don't know this thing is short. Okay, <laughs> just to make him mistakes and uh, use my game to not give him the chance to hit his forehand. How many different serves did you use? Actually, because it's big pressure, very important match for us, I was a little bit uh, under the pressure, so I used one, but very, very successful. I changed the spins and the, the speed of the serve. And I know you guys have put in a lot of preparation for this weekend. Uh, most of you arrived on Tuesday, I think, and you've been playing twice a day. Uh, how do you feel about the I mean, you guys have got to feel pretty good about your chances this weekend. I mean, for you to take three now, that's got to fill you with confidence. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to our team, uh, team uh, also team uh, team owners, coach uh, that support us all the season. So we we feel very comfortable here. So it helps a lot. What, what, if anything, were you working on during your days of training to get ready for this big weekend? Um, at home, as usual, I try to do a, a lot of physical work, like to be fast. Um, have good stamina and yeah yeah and congratulations on a 3-0 sweep we'll let you go get ready for the golden oh, game and you. we'll watch the doubles thank you thank you very much thank you Yevgen oh, if there was ever a time to land a 3-0 sweep Yevgen Prashep has got to be pretty happy that it was now one, one. so first two doubles points split Liang and Guan against Gorak and Ekholm. We have seen this exact doubles pairing four times previous, previously this year. All four times, Florida took two out of three. So there has not been a sweep. Ishan's forehand is still the most explosive shot from these four players. There has to be a just a ton of pressure weighing on the shoulders of Ekholm and Gorak now, but it's all Princeton, and specifically it's all Jishan. You know, I'd be very interested, given that the Princeton team specifically spent time at Princeton Pong building up to this weekend, whether they spent time focusing on doubles, knowing how important it would be coming into this weekend. Because, you know, when you're traveling a lot, you don't really get time to do deliberate and specific training for your doubles combination. Yes, there's a lot of warming up before matches, there's some practice sessions between matches, but when you have a, a three or four day preparation, you have time to really focus on things. So it'd be interesting to see if Matthias Harbison actually spent some time working on the doubles. Four, three. Ekholm and Gorak have, have just been such a solid doubles combination. And the kind of emotional roller coaster that you go through in a match with both of them. It's always 
Well. Very expressive doubles pairing. Am I crazy? Has, has Matilda Ekholm played with glasses before in MLTT? I might be crazy, but I don't think she has. I don't think she's actually played the match with glasses before. No, not in MLTT. making that half-long opening. What? You have to wonder, in this pressure situation, how the corresponding moods of Jishan and Gorak after the first singles. No doubt about it, man. I mean, I'm just thinking about, you, you can't avoid the, the big alligator in the room right now. You know, look at who Princeton has next. Koyo and Jinxin Wong, who both have been playing really well lately against Brossi and Duran, who have had their ups and downs. They both had their moments, but I think you favor Princeton to at least mm. get two points in each of those matches on paper. Now, you don't play it on paper, but if Gorak and Ekholm can't take two out of three here, th this could get Five. ugly. I mean, yes. this yep, totally could become a, a, a really insurmountable lead. and began the day with a three-point lead in the standings. It's now obviously up to seven. Oh! I mean, now Florida can win the Golden Eight, Game, six. right? Yeah, but I mean, it would reframe the conversation considerably. <laughs> yeah. in, in terms of which game to focus on, even if they only win one out of the three games, get the first one. Your, your chances of having a Let's. big impact on the second and third go up so much if they can get the first game then, you know, as opposed to getting the middle game or the last, obviously. Whoa! Dishon wants that Time. swing back and Princeton's taking a timeout. Florida has clawed their way back. Here into this opening game, it's 8-7. So he can get this slow one and then counter. When he's, when he's pushing back, Stay a little closer. Closer. Yes. I know. This yeah. time they don't. Little closer. Yeah. But no, no problem. We are leading. Everything is fine. He is playing very well. Okay. Yeah. You just now, a little bit lower and a little bit really closer. Really okay. Okay. I just got to point out a couple of things. Okay. When they make like bomber, that you can. Lists. Okay. But when they twist, this one's much better than doubles. Than this. The Florida Crocs, yeah, yeah. 36 and 21. They are the second best doubles record in the league right now. Just behind the gold rush, but they are incredibly dangerous. With so he doesn't feet. get the bomb, and you bomb. Now the revolution, okay. holding strong right now with a one point lead, but they're going to need your help to get through this three game Just match right now. Because so please welcome back like in the, the Florida Crocs and your very you own Princeton Revolution. Yeah. Bravo. Come on, leading, 8-7, everything fine. Yeah, come on. 8-7, everything's fine. <laughs> We shall see if that is indeed the case, these next few points. Something between, wait, Angela, something between tables, online, online, yes. Little schmutz on the table, <laughs> technical H7. term. Oh. Eight all. Big chance there for Jishan to counter that, but opted to backhand block instead for position. Ekholm serves. Gorak wants that backhand flick back. These are such big points right here, man. Wow, Dishan could not put a whole lot on that forehand, but he angled it well, forcing Gorak to fire off balance. Not a whole lot of pace, but certainly a whole lot of spin. And 
and eight, three game points. That was an underrated, really nice shot from Jishan. Not, not his typical forehand either. Showing a different pitch. Ekholm keeps Florida in it. That's Matilda's best swing of the match. Ekholm in mixed doubles has such a great ability to play topspin and make it difficult for the male players to counter. Remember early in the season, it felt like no matter what the score was, score and Ekholm were down, they'd figure out a way to come back and win it. But they can't do it here. Gorak sends it way long, and Guan Leong take game one. Now a 6-1 lead for the Revolution. We certainly saw many twists and turns in that opening game. Now the order switches. So we'll see if Florida can take advantage of this. There's still two more matches this weekend, tomorrow and Sunday, and there's still two more singles matches today, but Florida has not gotten off to the start. It has wanted to, despite Gorak leading 8-1 to one in the opening game of the first singles match earlier this evening and an edge from Juan. One, one, Grow. Certainly worth noting that Chicago trailed by seven points to two at one stage during their match with Carolina. Two, Came one. back to win in the Golden Game. Florida Crocs, it has to start now. If they lose this doubles match, it's, I, I feel it's a bad omen in itself, regardless of the next two matches as well. Gorak and Echo need to dig deep. Shishan moving across in front of Angelo, this is actually a big goal when you're playing against the left and right-handed combination is to try and get the players to cross over, move in front of each other. This is harder for, this, this doubles order is harder for the Princeton Revolution um, because Daniel will drop the ball short a lot. So you can see they'll move them into the table and then they'll push them out from the table. You can see how they bunch up together in the corners. Four, Second three. miss serve of the night for Gorak. Yeah, you saw Ojo miss a couple as well. Stunning. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the thing that stands out here is when Guan plays out long, Jishan is not able to counter Gorak's first attack. He hasn't been able to control the spin blocking, but he's just a little bit too far back. And it's kind of the thing that I've talked about the most with their doubles combination, is Jishan drifts too far back from the table. Angela moves back to play defensively. Jishan follows her out, and he's just too far away. This, this is what he needs to do. He needs to stay in. He needs to keep his body weight forward. If a ball pops up, don't wait for it and take a big swing. Get in there and go for it. But so far, tactically, Ekholm and Gorak have played this second game pretty well. Six, 
fight. As aside from obviously staying close to the table, what's the key determining factor in whether you're going to attack a short ball or just return a short ball? Um, there are a lot of factors. I mean, knowing whether you have a place on the table to attack, um, whether you can apply enough pressure to actually make it an effective attack or not, especially when you have players out there that are just looking for a chance to counter. Um, Jishan in particular, you don't want to flick a ball that's 60% pace and give him the chance to put it away. So, yeah, there has to be an opportunity for flicking to create an advantage for you. Six all, game two. Order may not be as advantageous for the revolution, but they're still right there. And now they've got a lead. Princeton team that started the season one and six. Ten and two in the last 12 Seven. matches. And Seven. seemingly on their way again today. Up to a 6-1 lead through the first seven games. Seven all here in game number eight. Ekholm, she let the ball drop a little bit later. I mean, if Princeton can get this second game, I think symbolically, given how well Ekholm and Gorak have performed in doubles against them, it would be a pretty big deal. Oh! No spin served there from Gorak. As I said earlier, every single time it's been Gorak and Ekholm against Leong and Guan. Four previous matches, Florida has won two out of three games. So that is still very much a possibility here. 9-8 oh! lead for the Crocs. Cut off guard a little bit by Angela being a little aggressive on the return. Game point for Florida. Kind of subdued body language right now from Angela and Jishan. They're certainly not out of this. Back home with a pair of serves. Gorak looking to attack. Sends it long. Ten, nine. This next third ball attack might be the biggest shot of Daniel Gorak's MLTT career. Can he put the pressure on Princeton? Another error creates another golden point. Angela Guan will serve. Ten, ten. Revolution. Princeton comes from behind to take game two of the doubles. 11 to 10. They lead 7 1 overall. Another heartbreaking loss for the Florida Crocs. Up 10-8. Gorak with plenty of opportunity. Disappointing for the Crocs, but Princeton enjoying the moment here in Jersey.
The first time all season long that Princeton has won a doubles match against Florida. Now we see if Liang and Guang can complete the sweep, guarantee themselves a lead going into the Golden Game, regardless of what happens coming up. 11-9, 11-10 are about as close as you can get, Matt, but it's hard not to see and feel the contrasting emotions and the yeah. body language Zero, with everybody right one. now. On the table and in the bench areas. And again, this point counts just as much as last one. Ekholm just flipped her paddle. Trumps, and yellow card. The yellow card has been the price assessed for that minor outburst. Two, zero, revolution. Yovana Kejnovic giving Ekholm the yellow. It's just a warning. Three, if it happens zero. again, though, it's a point penalty, right? Yes, it would be a yellow and red card together. If there was ever a time to get a yellow to try Three. to change the momentum, this would probably be it. I don't know if Matilda got her money's worth. <laughs> Not that I'm suggesting it would be good for her to deliver a huge One, outburst, four. but Florida's got to do something, change the momentum. Getting in. Again, that, that opening loop from Ekholm is, is tough to time for a big counter. It dips down, she keeps it pretty low. Four, two, revolution. Service error from Guam. We no joke, we have seen more service errors so far today than we have seen in some entire weekends throughout I the season. genuinely feel like I've seen more service errors in Major League Table Tennis than in regular Table Tennis matches. And I think it's the pressure and you know, the shorter format, just knowing how, I think, I think Rebite was the one who answered it probably the best. He said, you know, you put the same amount of pressure on your serve as you do on other parts of your game. If, if you want to up the up the anti with your serve, then there's risk involved. And he's, you know, he said the serve is really important when you're playing just three games. Or you're playing golden points. So um, that certainly shone some light on a kind of mysterious uh, <laughs> difference between MLTT and a couple of good heads of hair in the on deck circle. Brossier for Florida, Coyo from Princeton. Don't know whether to feel targeted by that comment, Evan. <laughs> it was not the intent. Six, I have four. no idea what your head of hair looks like. You're always wearing the hat. There's nothing under that. Well, Could have fooled me. Oh, -ho! maybe I'll borrow the. Uh, the the, uh, the gold rush Gandalf get up. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. Huh. Good backhand smash six, from Ekholm six. for even six all here in game three. Ekholm's got to step up the offensive. I mean. She's got to have confidence in her shots, even if it is the slow, spinny opening. How about the attack from Guan? Six, seven. She spent all season long lulling her East Division opponents into a false sense of, she's not going to attack. Of course, we see it on occasion. 
And it's usually effective because it does catch the opposition off guard. Seven. Like a net ball would. In the era of Sierra Mist and Starry, you don't see a whole lot of seven up anymore. That's what we got right here. Florida in front by one. Revolution. That's a risky play from Liang. You don't see many long fast serves in doubles. That pays off for him. Has some great serves this season. Could you dial up a couple here? Oh! Wasn't a bad serve, Matt. But Gorak, again, almost like he feels an obligation to be aggressive on that third ball. That's the shot that cost him game two. Oh, goodness. Charging over the table, Jishan Leong leaves no doubt and sets up game point for Princeton. Revolution one point away from a sweep in doubles and an 8-1 lead on the scoreboard for the night. Not done yet. Both teams be a whole, Ten, nine, whole revolution lot serve. more deliberate strategizing in between points. And nine. Ten, ten. Ten, ten. You can see, and it's just a number of times that I've noticed the footwork patterns between Guan and Jishan. When they cross over each other, Gorak, perfect opportunity to play out wide to Jishan's forehand. Golden point. Four rock serving for Florida at 10 all. My goodness. Keyshawn Leong and Angela Guan complete the sweep in style. Eleven nine, eleven ten, and eleven ten. Three thrilling games all belong to Princeton. Have you have I, I don't even remember if we ever saw Princeton 3 0 sweep in a doubles. Maybe against Chicago, but certainly not against the Crocs or the Carolinas. We're going to chat with Angela Guan after the 3 0 sweep in doubles. Angela, congratulations. W was that the most exciting doubles match you've played this year? Yeah, quite thrilling to say the least. All nines and golden points. T take us through it. I mean, obviously, we know this is a huge match for you and for Florida. Daniel and Matilda have had your number all year long. What changed today? Daniel and Matilda are a very strong pair, and pretty much we've lost every single one against them. And this is the last match of season one, also our home court. So Jishan, my partner, was really supporting, supportive and encouraging me just to fight hard and give it our best, especially on home court. You never know what happens. Now, Angela, I know you guys have been here practicing a lot. Um, a lot of you have been here since Tuesday, training at Princeton Pong. One of the things that I was wondering, I mean, you guys came out of the blocks looking really good as a doubles pair. Did Matias spend time with you guys focusing on doubles during those few days of practice? We worked really uh, much on individual game, but it really complemented the doubles as well and different skills to make doubles a success. What will you do between now and when the Golden Game starts, Angela? 
stay focused, cheer for my teammates, and keep fighting. Let's go, Revolution. Well said. We'll leave it there. Congratulations on the 3-0 sweep. We'll see you in the Golden Game. Thanks, Thanks. Angela. Enjoy the match. Unless you're a Florida fan, this has been absolutely riveting and enjoyable. We have seen uh, three golden points, all won by Princeton. Princeton, I mean, look, nine games so far. Six of the nine have been decided by three points or less, and all six of those games have gone to Princeton. Five of the six to Jishan. Yeah, Jishan is having a night, that's for sure. All right. Koyo versus Rossier. Kanemitsu defeated Brossier two games to one when they met for the first time in MLTT. I think he won the first two, right? Uh, no, they split the first two. Oh, yeah. Brossier won the first uh, game, 11 9. Yeah, and that's Kanemitsu, nice. I remember that. Kanemitsu won game two, 11 8. Game three was a lopsided 11 3 first game, final. Revolution to serve, 0 0. That's when I put a little bit of heat on him in the <laughs> post match interview. <laughs> We'll see what he can do this time. Let's. And there have been moments this season when Benjamin Brossier has taken the table in dire straits for Florida and delivered some fantastic performances. Yeah, and he's actually been up here on the sideline, kind of in the back area. Uh, I would say for almost the entirety of the doubles match, One. doing One. little footwork drills doing shadow play, everything to get himself focused and in the zone. Okay. Oh. Two, one. Day so far for Jishan Leong, fantasy oh. owners, I'll tell you that. Two. Are you one of them? I might be. I haven't checked in on the standings yet. I've got to see where, where oh. Sean's at. <laughs> don't don't make the same mistake that Sean makes in going all in on your trash talk after one match or two matches on a weekend. That is the biggest mistake you can make, and Sean has made that mistake on multiple occasions. And fairness, so have I. <laughs> had a brilliant start last time. I mean, w what is your mentality coming into the weekend considering that in five consecutive MLTT weekends, you and Sean have both finished with fewer points than I have? Aren't you guys supposed to be the experts? My mentality is that it's a season-long fantasy, and I'm ahead of both of you. So the, 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 the weekly standings only exist until the next match. The season standings are forever. So, Well, you know. there is some factual truth to what you are saying. I can say one thing. The I've been the most print. consistent in terms of submitting a team. <laughs> Well, I was not aware the competition existed that first Let's weekend. It did. Knowledge is power. And uh, you you have remembered to submit your lineup every weekend. Yeah. But if we're if we're doing an average of points per weekend competing, I have uh, scored 677.3 per weekend competing, and you're at a 659.8. But who's counting? <laughs> Probably the guy with the report in front of it. Ah, uh, to be a play-by-play. -play. <laughs> at least at this point, Sean O'Neill probably has an understanding and expectation that he's going to finish below you and I. Because that has uh, happened more often than not. I think but I appreciate his, his perseverance sticking with it. I think he's been conditioned at this stage. Eight, four. He, he is an Olympian and a U.S. national champion. 
and a U.S. Table Tennis Hall of Famer. Those are three things that neither you nor I will ever experience. Nine, four. Uh, Koyo Kanemitsu off oh. to a great start. He didn't win the first game the last time they played against each other. Could winning the first game four. here be the Ten. difference? We have not seen hardly any 3-0 sweeps from Five. Koyo. Ten. And he's definitely a player who has a very high top level comes down the consistency. Brossier hanging around. A couple big swings to take care of that point. Still a bunch of game points here for Kanemitsu Koyo. Nails that one. It's 10 7. Princeton out. takes the timeout with Brossier gaining momentum. Matthias Habison trying to dip that in the mud. Okay. Making a strong it's comeback. Still down more down more by three. More three. Okay. When he's putting short, you pull short, but he's for it. So he must move, so far? and then next you can play. Okay. Yeah. I love that on a Friday night. This area, we're watching a professional It's not something I ever thought would be possible. Just like being in your main for this long service, this you play a little bit more together. But with normal deals, but I got to shout out the ball people. Come on, pick up the balls, the ball boys and girls. Oh yeah, getting some. Some advice is there from Coach Matthias Harbison, Ji Shan Liang. Koyo is actually fluent in Ten, Mandarin as well. Seven. Revolution. His mother, I believe, is Chinese, so spent a lot of time in the Liaoning province. Game one for Koyo Kanemitsu. 11-7. I don't know that many people saw this coming, Matt. I mean, nine to one through the first 10 games. It certainly was reasonable to feel like Princeton had an advantage, but not like this. I mean, I think it just shows how much the Princeton team want this. I think there's a hunger that exists on the Princeton bench that it's just not the, I mean, if you look, the Florida bench right now is very subdued. I mean, yes, they're not in a great position in the match, but I feel like this has been an ongoing thing. And it's not just momentum of results, it's momentum of the team unity and the preparation and the energy on the bench. Again, these teams have just been moving in opposite directions. And, you know, I think Brossier has been a player that's kind of shouldered a lot of that responsibility for the team. I mean, he's not getting energy from his bench right now. He's got to try to create it himself. Yeah, I mean, I asked him about that in, in Winterhaven. You know, I said when, when a player like Gorak comes out and that doesn't go too well and, you know, maybe another couple of matches don't go too well, how do you handle that? I said, well, I can't control what happens with my teammates. The only thing that I can focus on is, is getting my points on the board and trying to do my bit. So he, he's kind of, it almost gives the impression that he's like isolated the rest of the team so it doesn't affect him. Eight, two, one. Koyo getting a little bit trigger happy with the forehand in a couple of these first points of the second game. The loudest outburst from Brossier after a point all match. Oh, what a point. High toss serve. Koyo took some rips and Brossier handled every one of them. that point, Brossier can 
use it to create some momentum for his team. Like that. Two, four. I wish some members of the Crocs bench came to their feet after that last point. They're clapping politely over on the Crocs bench. But it's a, a Wimbledon bench. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, especially in it's here, Three, you're four. in Princeton's home court. There are, you know, probably 80 people, maybe even more, behind the Princeton team. That's a nice shot down the line. Five, three. Brossier, a month ago in Winter Haven. Might have had his best weekend of the entire season, Matt. I mean, both his singles record and his Golden Game performance oh. were impeccable. Was Sing six and three in singles. And in 20 Golden Game points that he played across the three matches, he went 13 and seven. The highest Four. winning percentage as, that anybody has in a Golden Game for the, for the entire year. 62%, so 13 and 7, 65%. Yep. That's a really good weekend. Yeah, he had a great weekend. First class. <laughs> Explosive forehands from Cuello. Kind of willing himself to stay focused. I think it's been the the standout Five, issue for him six. throughout season one is no one's given him a harder time about it than you have. Oh, how about that little Seven, five. fluttering shot down the line? That was a pretty impressive serve receive from Brossier. Kicked back in. By the way, I, I, I'm not... I, my goal isn't to give you a hard time about the hard time you're giving Koyo. You're absolutely right. And I appreciate that you keep mentioning it because, <laughs> you, you, you know, it's, you, you want to see his best. He's back within one here Seven, in game two. I mean, look, we, we, we've said it. How many times tonight? This is a really huge situation here for Florida. Yep. They need to deliver. I mean, we've said that so many times. And for the most part, it hasn't worked out yet for the Crocs. Will this moment be any different? <laughs> seven all. Seven, seven. Koyo leads. Eight, seven. Timeout, Crooks. Timeout, Florida. Let's see what the vibe is on the Crocs sideline right now. Okay, so just, just calm. Right, they're like rushing it a little bit. Just calm down. You don't need to go all, all the power every time. Come Come on, come on, come on. You can, you, you can get it. Come on. You can get this point. That was one of the least chatty timeouts of the entire MLTT season. I just, they, I, for me, the energy is just lacking. I mean, so Eight, seven, revolution. I guess Crocs in stagnant water to some to some point. Eight, Great point eight, though eight. for Grossier. 
Again, subdued reaction from the Florida bench. And look, it's hard to feel really positive and cheer when you're struggling on the table. What a point from Benjamin Brossier. And that gets Korok and Ekholm to their feet. And look, if you are struggling on the table, the least you can do is bring the energy to try to help yep. your teammates. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why I credit Emily Tan so much. It doesn't matter whether she wins a doubles game, loses a You know, they could get swept 3-0 in doubles, yeah. and she's still given everything. And that's, and that's for Chicago. That's for a team that doesn't even have a chance of making the playoffs now. Game points for Brossier, 10-8. Kanemitsu has the serves. I like it how he gingerly looked up to make sure that ball wasn't on the table, even though it was so far away. <laughs> there was a split second. I wondered, could that spin its way back to the edge? You see a little tremor in his hand there. What a serve. Oh, no. A of kick on that hook serve. Rossier will have the serve for the golden point. The fourth golden point of this team match. The first three have all been won by Princeton. Jishan took one in singles. Jishan and Angela won two in doubles. Brossier serving to Kanemitsu. Ten all. What a return! Brossier bidding to try to keep the point alive, and there was nothing he could do. Koyo Kanemitsu comes from behind to take game two, 11-10. What a redirect from Koyo, and we've seen Brossier take a dive on numerous occasions. I mean, it goes to show how much, how much pressure Brossier shoulders and how important every point is to him. Job is not yet done for Koyo Kanemitsu or the Princeton Revolution with a 10 to 1 lead. There are 10 points still up for grabs. It's hard to fathom Florida possibly winning the next 10 points considering they've lost 10 of 11, but hey, crazier things have happened in the world. But obviously, it is all going Princeton's way right now. And 12 points in the lead on the board. And tomorrow, Princeton plays Carolina. Third game. And if you're Princeton, you're not, you're not necessarily Third. thinking about catching Carolina Zero. in the standings. Zero. That's not impossible, but almost impossible. But just a strong performance against the Gold Rush. I mean, could make it that Florida it's, I mean, it's has, has nothing to play for. I mean, th there's a world in which Princeton clinches this thing before Sunday if we continue oh. on this pace. I mean, with this One. momentum and this, this trend right now in this match, if Revolution close this out and close out the golden game. You have to think if they play strong against Chicago and potentially win against Carolinas, Two, one. they could still finish at the top of the table. Carolina entered the night needing 17 Two, points to oh. come first place. They got nine of them. So Carolina needs to win eight points in their next two team matches to yeah, finish number do. one. Hard to see that not happening. Enzo will have 12 points up for grabs himself. 
be surprising if he does. Eight, eight out of 12 would be a low score for him. Based upon what he's done this year, winning close to 80% of these singles and doubles. So, you know, you never know. No Kai Jung for Carolina today. We'll see him the next couple days. Well, that was one of the slower aces I've ever seen. Four. Not seen that many aces this year. Brassier wants a new ball. <laughs> right on cue. Three, four. Might be the first time all year we've had aces on back to back points. Boy, I just missed timing that four, forehand. Four. Assuming Florida doesn't have a crazy comeback in them tonight. And Wong Duran should be a competitive match, but Jin Jin's a slight favorite, not so solid favorite. I don't know. We'll see. Duran capable of fireworks. But it's going to be really interesting five, to see five. what kind of Florida team we get tomorrow. You know, yeah. Florida has Chicago tomorrow afternoon. What kind of spirit, what kind of fight do they have? Borussia is bringing everything. I mean, look at that. Six, five. He's keeping himself as focused as possible. I mean, he's winning points out there to almost silence. Lead 7-5. Even if Florida wins the rest of the games before the Golden, it'll be a 5-0 lead start of the Golden game for Princeton. Five, trying to double the Crocs point total. For the season, Matt, teams with a 5-0 lead heading into the Golden game are 31-2. In the golden game, Brossier Nine catches five. the edge. And a strong oh. third game for Benjamin. Saw one crazy comeback in the golden game earlier tonight. Who knows? Great retreat Nine from Brossier. I mean, the, the thing about a comeback is it has to start somewhere, right? Sure it does. And there's still a chance for the Crocs if they can win this game. And then if Six, Duran can have ten. a really exceptional performance, they can still go in with a chance of winning the match. <laughs> Koyo Kanemitsu fights off that game point with a little pizzazz. Brassier still trying to close this out. <laughs> that just, was to get, just to get a paddle on that ball was insane. Ten, eight. Ridiculous forehand from Kanemitsu. The angle and the pace. Cross here, almost ended up on the floor again. That's why the Kamish calls him floor burn. Ten, eight, now cross. The serve goes back to Benjamin. And the Frenchman needs just one of these next couple points to earn a point for his team. That'll do it. That's the first one. So that's got to feel pretty good. A cathartic single point for Benjamin Brossier. 
Koyo unable to complete the sweep. However, two more points for Princeton, and it's 10 to two as we head to the final singles match of the evening. 11-8 for Brassier in game three, but Koyo Kanamitsu won that golden point in game two. He won that final three-point sequence. The golden points have gone Princeton's way. I mean, think of it like this, Matt. It's 10 to two right now. Hmm. Princeton's 4-0 in oh golden points. If they were 2-2 two and two on golden points, it'd be 8-4. Obviously, if Florida had won all those golden points, yeah. we'd be tied. Yep. Yep. If. F. <laughs> F. <laughs> Let's chat with Koyo Kanamitsu. Koyo, congrats on a, a really strong performance. I'm sure you would have loved to get that last game, but what were you most pleased about with what you were able to do and with what your team is doing tonight? You, I know you, you practiced since Tuesday, but this has been a phenomenal night for Princeton so far. Yeah. Uh, we come on Wednesday, then prepare very well, and every day twice in practice and prepare uh, for Florida. Yeah, and everyone play very well. How how do you feel about training that much? Is, did you do you come into this match feeling uh, feeling strong after that much practice, or maybe a little bit more tired? Or yeah, actually, I feel a little pain in my back from practice, but also. Uh, Andrew, uh, they prepare massage mm. for the team, so yeah, it was not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the key in that match against Benjamin? Clearly, y you were able to move him around and kind of have him sprawling for some of your shots around the court. At first, I tried to keep every ball short and then try to open first ball in the rally just uh, stay for many rallies. Yeah. Well, it looks like you're working hard out there. We'll let you go cool off and get ready for the Golden Game. Congratulations, Koyo. We'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Thank you. He looks worn out. Let, yes. let him go get a towel. First game, drop the All right. Start. Mark Duran versus Jin Shin Wong. Zero, zero. These two played one time in a match earlier this year, every game went to the golden point. Yeah, I remember that. It's fairly early on, I think. It was the first weekend of the season. One. It was the first, yes, it was. The yeah. first day of MLTT competition six months ago. Exactly. One. That first weekend of the season, Mark Duran only went one in five in singles. Go! Jin Shin Wan two. won two, two of the three golden points. Jin Shin Wong that weekend went just two and seven in singles. Those were his only wins. But here we are at the end of the season. Jin Shin, after starting two and seven, has fought his singles record back to 500. He's 21 and 21. Mark Duran had a tough winter haven. Yeah, yeah. One and eight last month. He's 17 and 31 overall for the year. Yeah, I think he just, he really wasn't able to get himself pumped up at all. And, you know, I think it's become a issue with the, the team as a whole. Jen Shen, I mean, even just since Four, I arrived three. here, you know, I was here for most of the most of the day today. Um, just buckets and buckets of multi ball. The the amount of Three, sweat and five. grind that he was putting into preparing for this match. Um, you know, I spoke to Andre and Andre said they have two sessions a day of practice at Princeton Pong and then when the players are all done they have to wait another half an hour because Jin Chin's Four, not done, five. so he's really stepped up in terms of the, the preparation for this weekend. Six, Mark Duran, four. I mean, he's had some phenomenal matches 
this season. I mean, particularly if we look back at the cross division, he had some great matches. Played some unreal Four. shots. Two-handed backhands, chops in the middle of a rally. Oh, Mark Duran with some ridiculous returns to keep that point alive, but Jin Shin Wong changing the angle and forcing Duran sprawling to win the point. Remarkable stuff from both players there. And just a cool, soft touch from Wong to finish the point. Five, eight. I feel like Duran's got pretty good energy so far. It's just he's been outplayed. Yeah, yeah Nine, I think he, he certainly had some tough matches, but we, we kind of saw him step up more in the Golden Game. His energy levels in the Golden Games were much higher, even in Winter Haven. Well, to that point, Nine, his eight. record in singles, as I said, 17 and 31, it's not great. He has one more points than he's lost in Golden Games this year. Six, ten. And Chin Wan, for that matter, also has one more points than he's lost in Golden Games. Oh, he missed it. Oh. And Chin Wan takes game one. That clinches the match victory. But there are still eight gigantic points up for grabs. Princeton began the night with a three-point lead after taking 11 of the third, first 13 points this evening. That lead has widened considerably. Look at the up to the second standings in the East Division. Chicago did upset Carolina earlier tonight. Started the Golden Game with a three-point deficit, game, came back to win it, so they got zero, 12 points zero. to Carolina's nine. Right now, Princeton's got 11 of the first 13 points this evening. Oh. The lead is 12 One. in that race for second place. Top two in the division, advanced to championship weekend. This is the final weekend of the regular season for East Division One. competition. One. The West will wrap up Go. their regular season schedule three weeks from now in Wichita, Kansas. Go. What are you seeing here, One. Matt? Because from my perspective, Mark Durant's taking some good swings, hitting some good shots. Chin Chin Wong just has all the answers. I think he's just in really good shape. I think he's, he's, oh my. I mean, you, you talked about him starting Three, off, a little, you know, starting off a little bit slower in the, the first weekend. Um, we've had conversations with him. We've had conversations with uh, Matthias Harbison about him taking a team that he saw potential in, maybe not in the first week or in the second week. But in the season overall, and, and Jin Shen, he, he just, he knew that if Jin Shen put the hours into practice, then he could deliver for the team, and he has. Oh, Jin Shen Wong is on fire right now. Every possible angle, mind-blowing stuff. <laughs> Some 
big reactions. The uh, Revolution's mascot. I don't know whether <laughs> I don't know whether these are official mascots or just people showing up in costume. But six one. One six. Mark Duran's positive energy, vibes. They were oozing in the first game. They have been significantly diminished, although that's a good forehand winner over the table. Long Seven, road ahead, though, for Duran as he continues to try to hop around. It's Coach Frank Arias looking on. Shen Shen just looking pretty unassailable out there. This is kind of the, the level of Chen Shen that won the 2015 US Open. Yes, indeed. So you're talking about a, uh, a revival of form eight years in the making. Chin Chin turned 32 years old in November. Ten, He's gradually three. gotten better throughout the season. Of course, it's been a, a, a wild Ten, season three, for Chin Chin Wong in a lot of ways. He became a father for the first time. He lost his mother, missed the January weekend, being with his mother in her final days, and now he's trying to help the Princeton Revolution close in on the playoffs and really find form over Mark Duran, two games to none. Smiles for the Princeton owners. Giving cheers to the guy they call Third the game, professor. Crocs to serve. Jin zero. Shin Wong has his team in front 12 to 2. One, zero. Now, Princeton's going to get the W in the win column. Mm -hmm. There's still seven points up for grabs, and it, it's no zero, exaggeration, two. Matt. At, at this point, Florida's season might be riding on this this Golden Game here. I mean, let's say they let's say Chin Wong completes the sleep the sweep and it's 13 to two. It's obviously a 12 point swing. Whether we finish 13 to eight or 19 to two, mm. and there's just Four, not a whole zero. lot of time for Florida to make up that gap. If they lose 19 to two, they're down 20 points. Yeah, going yeah, into the final two days of the season. And they got Carolina, who's not going to let up against them. Yeah, yeah and, and I feel like anything that the Crocs Five, can do against zero. the Chicago wind, Change. the Revolution can probably do it as well. So that's right. Are they going to have a significantly different result against the wind? This was their Princeton? chance to end yeah, Princeton losses. Yeah. They haven't been able to do it. Now, they ran off to a fantastic start Five, here in game three. Zero. See if Wong can regain his focus. Let's. Oh. Zero six. Even this single game would give the Crocs some positive energy. Neither player going to the towel at 6 0. One, six. Shen 
and stringing together a few points in a row here. Interesting to see what, if anything, Frank Arias does in terms of the Golden Game order to try to give his team a spark. If Mark Duran can finish off this game, I mean, I think you got to put Duran and Brostier in the first two spots just to try to use the, the little success they had as building blocks early in the Golden Game. You're going to be down 5 nothing. You got to get off to a good start. You know? Pretty good defense from Jin Shin Wong, but Duran calmly Eight puts four. it away. 8-4. Final West Division event, April 5th through the 7th in Wichita, Kansas. And then three weeks after that, we will be in Chicago to decide the first ever Major League Nine Table four. Tennis champion. The MLTT Cup will be awarded. $100,000 of prize money on the line. Four, ten. Game points for Durant. He's able to Allowing salvage game three. Game. So it's 12 to, to three one. going into the Golden Game, meaning that the final score tonight will either be 18 to three or 12 to nine. And it's not an exaggeration to say that Florida's season is somewhat on life support, and this Golden Game, in which they'll start down 5-0, is absolutely massive. Build is one of the biggest matches of the entire season. Florida and Princeton began the evening separated by just three points in the race for the two spot in the East Division. Daniel Gorak won eight of the first nine points in game number one of singles, but Jishan scored 10 in a row, won the golden point in game three, and that set the tone for Princeton. Prashepa swept on Aulapo, Leong, and Guan. Three narrow victories over Gorak and Ekholm. And then Koyo Kanemitsu and Jin Shin Wong both able to take two out of three. Credit to Brossier and Duran for salvaging a single point late in those matches. But it has been Princeton's night so far. Six points still up for grabs. Let's figure out the order for the Golden Game. Frank Arias, the coach of the Crocs. Matias Havasan, the coach of the Revolution, and the commissioner Legend, of Major League Table Tennis, Flint Lane. For Flint Lane! Okay, okay. Uh, the Princeton Revolution are leading 12 to 3. There are six points at stake, which will be vital in the season long standings for the playoffs. Since you're leading, you will have a five point lead going into the Golden Game. Coach, since you're behind, you will have the first pick. Mark Duran. Mark, Mark Duran is your number one. Wang Chinxin. Jinxin Wang? Yes. Jinxin Wang is your number one. And your two? Jishan Liang. Jishan Liang is your two. Daniel Gorak. Daniel Gorak, your two. Your three? Benjamin Brossier. Benjamin Brossier is your three. Koyo. Koyo Kanamitsu is your three, your four. Yefken. Yefken Prashepa is your four. Matilda Eko. Matilda is your four, making Ojo your five, making Angela your five. Good luck, coaches. Good luck. Thank you very much. 
So it's a five-hole lead for Princeton. The interesting quirk, Matt, is if this were championship weekend, the rules are going to shift. If it was championship weekend, it would be, be a nine-nothing yeah. lead. But Florida could win the Golden Game and win the whole match. That that's how championship weekend will be decided. MLTT staff deciding to make the Golden Game matter no matter what. Obviously it matters tonight. Not determining who's going to go home a winner in terms of earning more points. Princeton will build on its lead coming into the night. But it'll either be a 15 point addition or a three point addition. 12 point swing up for grabs right now. And Florida become the third team in the league this year to erase a 5-0 deficit in a golden game and come back and win. Let's find out. Good start for Mark Duran. Different demeanor in the golden game. Mark Duran just turning it up. Oh my goodness, Duran had it on his paddle. That's a stunning miss. He makes that shot, what, 9 out of 10 times, 49 out of 50 times? And he missed the next one as well, 7-1 Princeton. Break for Florida. It's been Jishan's night so far, let's see if he can keep it rolling. Gorak takes the opening point. Good change from Gorak to put the ball down the middle. What a backhand from Daniel Gorak. Do they serve out of order here? The team that trailing is supposed to serve first? Mm, I don't know. All right, delivers in the yeah, golden game. That's a golden Seven sweep five. for Next Daniel player. Gorak. All of a sudden, it's a two-point game. Rossier and Poyo back to the table. What a counter from Poyo, Kanemitsu. Mitsu, large and in charge. Rossier counters. One more point for these two, and then the intriguing matchup Matilda Ekholm versus Yevgen Prashepa. Kanemitsu on the aggressive. You can see on the mic in the background, Brian Willard, good friend of mine, obviously, Adam Barbro at the Singapore Smash. Great to have Ryan with us. He actually went to school here in Princeton, so a bit of a homecoming for him. Shepa versus Ekholm. Simple but strong from Yevgen Prashepa. This is a tough style matchup for Ekholm. Six, twelve. Prashepa handles business on his serve. 
Ekholm cannot do the same. This might get away from the Crocs here quick. Three in a row for Prashepa. He swept his singles match. He swept the first three points here in the Golden Game as well. Stops seven. the sweep. Big forehand. Now Ojo against Angela Guan. This is going to be very interesting. I feel like Ojo needs minimum three here to give Florida a chance. Really, they need a sweep. Guan takes the first point. See, Ojo just kind of froze up. I mean, he's a player that has so much power against backspin, but goes on the defensive against the defender. Much more aggressive return to serve there. Yeah, it has to be. Heavy backspin serve from Ojo. Revolution. And Matias Havasov is going to use his timeout here. I don't like to catch him a little bit in the angles. Okay. Just just three, four. No break, no break. We made already one point. I just got to you all. Okay. Yeah. Just maybe then we have a meeting yeah. afterwards. You just patiently receive the service. Yeah. Just if you have the chance, just try to put a little, little angle in it, okay? If it's just weird and or something, you just put on the table. Check it out. Okay. But it's right outside near the front entrance. Did, did she say you wasted a timeout? Either I, need, I don't want to waste a timeout or something like that. A little surprised he used it there. Ojo brings Florida back within four. He takes three of the four points over Angela. Back to the top of the order. Final. Four points of the night for Gorok, uh, for Duran and Wong. If we do get to 20 all, it'll be Ojo versus Guan. Otherwise, their evening is over. So Duran is actually asking about the serve. Kitchen Wong has the goods. Wow, he has just been locked in from the start, Matt. My goodness, are you kidding me? Yes, we made a whole compilation of these shots from Winter Haven. Get the editor machine going again, because you got plenty to work with. A golden sweep for Jin Shin Wong. Duran just misfiring. Look of resignation on yeah. the face of the Crocs. Yeah, I mean, some of those shots are set up for him, but like that, that he can't miss that shot. It feels the like shots. the Crocs last stand. Borak got a golden sweep last time, and he starts off with an impressive backhand flick. Borak's taking five straight points from G Shan here in the Golden Game. And his teammates have not helped him out enough. Another one for Gorak, who brought his game face to the Golden Game. Rossier versus Koyo next. Leon on the board in the Golden. Princeton within two. Uh, finishing this thing up. Net ball. Long reverse, but net ball. Just a side from Gorak. Koyo Kanemitsu subduing a smile there, knowing that he has the chance to finish this big match for the Princeton Revolution. Great stuff from Brossier. 
with his back up against the wall to keep the Crocs alive for at least one more point. Quiet off two. Got to settle himself a little bit. Rossier could win these next two points. It would be for Shepa versus Ekholm. Uphill battle for the Crocs, but you never know. Can he get there? Oh, he's taking the first three. <laughs> Rossier, like he's done all season long, showed some real fight when his team's up against it. Match point for the Revolution. And that'll do it. <laughs> the Revolution here in New Jersey for all to see. Princeton destroys the Florida Crocs 18 to 3. Boy, I was just getting flattened out there. Princeton owner Andre Liu in true fashion sent a barrier flying vertically. Huge win for the Princeton Revolution. They felt confident going into it. They knew their preparation was there. I don't know if they expected a result this one-sided. They began the weekend with a three-point lead over the Crocs. That lead has now ballooned all the way to 18 points with just two matches left in the regular season. Tomorrow night in prime time, Princeton will take on the first place Carolina Gold Rush. They got the better of the Gold Rush a month ago in Winter Haven. Who knows, it could be a potential championship game preview. But the Florida Crocs need to regroup in a major way. What a performance from Koyo Kanemitsu, Jin Shin Wong, Yevgen Prashepa, and Jishan Liang did not have a great golden game, but over the course of the evening, he, he won five points for his team in singles and doubles. And uh, just a really impressive all around performance from the Princeton Revolution in front of these fans. We've talked about it, Matt. At times this year, teams have struggled playing at home, but Princeton, not one of them. Not tonight, Evan, not tonight. A tough order, I mean, especially for Angela as well, to be in that pressure seat up against Ojo. Jin Shin Wong joins us. Congratulations, Jin Shin. How does it feel to get the victory here tonight in a really big match? So good, it feels so good. It's our uh, last chance fighting for the playoff. I mean, I came in here today and I saw you doing just box after box after box of multi-ball. You are certainly putting in the hard work to prepare for this. I mean, you have to feel pretty great about how you played in your match against Duran. I think everything that I saw you doing in multi-ball was then showing on the table in that match as well. Yeah. Um, how has the preparation been for you this week and, and how happy are you with where your level is right now? Mm, actually, the, I'm doing a lot of multi-ball because I know it's a more rally this match with, uh, against du Duran. So maybe he like fishing or hit back, something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No surprise for me, just um, be ready, always be ready. What's the mindset, Jin Shin, going into the rest of this weekend? Obviously, you've built a cushion, but the job is not yet done. Yeah, we have two more matches. Yeah, we need to win two more matches. Guarantee for the playoff. And one more question from me. Um, we kind of talked about your progression through MLTT. Obviously, you're coaching a lot, and this you've, you've been training more for, and your level has gone up throughout the season. How do you feel about your playing level now compared to, you know, even 2015, like when you, when you won the US Open? Because if I look at that match, the thing that I said during that match is it just kind of reminded me of that level that you were playing at then. I think mentally um, improved uh, compared with uh, 2015. 
Actually, after register MLTT, I'm mm. working a lot for myself, not only coaching. Yeah. So yeah. first, lose a lot of weight, and the morning, if no lesson, I just practice with a um, friend or teammate, and I need to keep my level. We need to win. Yeah. Teaching, congratulations on a great night. Get some rest. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. You can hand that headset off to your coach, Matthias Habison. Kind of be pleased with the fan support here in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, on the campus of Ryder University. What a night for the revolution. Matthias joins us now. Congratulations. What, what a performance from your team. I imagine that you, you thought you could win every point, but... Eight, I mean, 18-3 to three over a team like Florida, yeah. th th that's just absolutely phenomenal. What stood out most to you about the mindset with which your team came into the night? I guess it was the spectators today. <laughs> they cheered for us like crazy. And if you analyze a little bit afterwards, I mean, I think there was five or six golden points. Yeah. And I think all of them went to us, if I'm not wrong. So, I mean, everything went for us today. This is normally not possible, but today in these crucial moments, it was really to totally for us. Yes, um, okay, but additional to that, I must say, we were really well prepared this time because we came earlier this time. It was possible because it's our like home match o almost and we could uh, practice uh, two, two and a half days in advance. And yeah, since uh, uh, two days, I, I can let the players just be like they are because they're on already in a flow and yeah it's a very very good and <laughs> nice what, situation for me when you brought the team together in the middle of the week what was your message to the team about getting ready for this weekend i i didn't have a special mes message my job was just because they already came in good shape and my job was just to keep them in motion to keep them moving to keep them focusing on their on their strengths and that's what they did in the practice and yeah uh, actually it went uh, really well because it was not that uh, Crocs played bad no it was really they, they, they were really playing well and uh, uh, but my team just managed to to yeah to enforce a little bit the, the best uh, uh, shots and stuff like that and yeah so it went for us and given given uh, the preparation that you guys put in I mean I was here most of the morning and into yeah. the early afternoon and saw a glimpse of, of what's probably been happening for the last few days. Um, is your intention after this result to let the team players rest a little bit tomorrow or do you think you have them back in here practicing? What, what mentality do you have coming in? Do you think push them a little bit more or rest is more important right now? Uh, definitely we will practice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there is some individualism, of course, in this sport especially, and there are some players who need a little bit more, some a little bit rest, especially in a situation like this where you have a, a relatively long weekend of play. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely we will do something in the, in, the, in the morning and keep this like motion, because uh, many times it's like this. I mean, you, you, you already uh, yeah, noticed that we practice a lot. Today the day was very long and very intense, and uh, I'm sure if I... If we don't move uh, tomorrow morning, we yeah, shut down a little like bit. Like concrete. No, so <laughs> exactly, yeah. So we just maintain the way we are doing the last month. And yes. Before we let you go, I want to ask you about the doubles. Clearly, that's been an area of struggle for the revolution this season. You had never beaten Florida in a doubles match. We've seen Yevgen play with Angela. We've seen Jishan play with Angela. What went into the decision to use Jishan today? And how proud are you of the job they were able to do? Honestly, that was just feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's always 50-50 uh, between all of them. And then I watch uh, how the dynamic is in the practice, how they are doing on specific shots. And uh, when the when one is playing the shots better, which are uh, important in the doubles, then I choose this uh, combination. Congratulations, Matthias, on a fantastic night for the Revolution. You yeah. came in with a three-point lead. You've now got an 18-point lead, but obviously the job is not yet done, so we'll let you get some rest, and we'll see you for the big showdown with Carolina tomorrow night. You are right. It's not over yet, so we just try to keep everything like it was. Thanks for the Thank perspective, you so much. as always. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you. Quick look at the standings before we sign off. Uh, it's hard to believe this Princeton team started 1-6. They were uh, yeah. in Chicago. You and I were together for the first time. They were 1-6 after that Friday night. Here we are four months later.
They have won 11 of their last 13 matches, 11 of their last 13 Golden Games, and they are in position to be back in Chicago in a month and a half for a championship. Yeah, I mean, look at the standings. I mean, you see the doubles records of Revolution and Crocs are all are reversed. The Golden Games are pretty similar. The, the big change that's come from the Princeton Revolution is the performance in singles. Um, being able to bring their best lineup, the levels of the players going up, the camaraderie, the energy that's coming from the bench, the preparation, everything is going in the Princeton Revolution's favor so far. What can you say? I mean, what a performance tonight. Yeah, the, the Florida Crocs are still just kind of sitting aimlessly on their bench, looking around. It'll be interesting to see what kind of fight and spirit they've got tomorrow. See if they can battle their way back. They've got an 18 point deficit to overcome and only two matches with which to do it. Princeton very much in control of their destiny now. The revolution behind Prashepa, Koyo, Jinshin, Angela, and Jishan win it. 21-15 in the Golden, 18-3 to close out a fun Friday night in Jersey. Good night, everybody.